Now, if in 10 days' time you hear people saying, Happy Birthday, Auntie, they'll probably be referring to the birthday of the BBC, 75 years young on the 18th of October. Back in 1922, the buzzword was radio. Now it's digital TV, and there's a lot of hype surrounding the so-called digital revolution. But what exactly is it all about? It all sounds wonderful. We're going to have better picture and sound on our tellies and lots of new programmes. That's what they're promising, but what's really going to be on offer? And first of all, what does this word digital really mean? Today's TV pictures are transmitted as analog waves. Digital TV compresses the same pictures into digits that take up less space, give better quality, and leave room for lots more channels. But you don't need a new TV set to go digital. What you need is a digital converter called a set-top box. And here it is, a set-top box no bigger than a home video recorder, and this is the brain that processes the digits that go to make up the equivalent of five million letters a second. That's the whole of the Bible in one second. And this is being produced here by a company at this Yorkshire mill, which has, in its time, seen many a technological breakthrough. Next year, these set-top boxes will be in our shops. The trouble is, one of them won't be enough to do the whole job, at least to start with. That's because television can be transmitted in three different ways. We'll need one to expand our existing terrestrial signals from the present five main channels to around 30, another to add the 200 or so satellite channels, and another for digital cable. And each box could cost up to £200 a piece. But is there going to be a stage where I can get a box that will do the whole lot? Um, I'm sure there will be. Uh, I'm sure there will be a point where the consumer effectively wants one box. I don't think anybody believes that the customer wants three different boxes in their home. I think that's kind of unrealistic. Hence, initially, it will probably start with add-on modules. But what you will buy is programming. You won't be looking for technology. If you wander into your local retail store, what will concern you is, what do I get? What indeed? Well, assuming the manufacturers sort out the problem of the set-top boxes, the next question is, will digital be any better? I asked the digital television expert, Andy Trott, for his verdict. What's so great about digital television? Well, digital television gives the broadcaster many options on how to actually transmit the signal. We've got a picture here, and I think you'll agree that the, the quality is the first thing that, that stands out. It's very, very good quality. Now, is the quality always better on digital? No, the, the quality isn't going to be all, always the, the primary thing that the broadcaster wants to control. Um, I can give you an example of this, Formula One motor racing. Some broadcasters are thinking about having cameras in car with Michael Schumacher, with Damon Hill, with the top drivers. And you can choose which one you want to watch? That will enable you to choose, yes. Absolutely. By controlling it with the button there? Absolutely. Well, now, with all these programmes, we're going to need a Radio Times that's about 300 pages thick, aren't we? Any alternative to that? Well, there's a new way of choosing what you watch, and it's called an electronic programme guide. And it allows you to uh, pull up all the channels that are currently showing, um, you can step through them, and um, you can select any program you want to, and very quickly, by the push of a button, go to that channel. Well, Andy, we're certainly spoiled for choice. I must say, it's going to be one hell of a job. Quite a nightmare making a choice of all that lot. Well, it just happens that some families here in Hull are having to make those choices right now, because they're all taking part in a trial of digital television, which they get through their telephone line right now. And this is a good example of the kind of service we may all get next year. Well, now, the first thing to ask you is, do you think the quality on this digital television is better than the normal? No. no. Not yet. No. Not, yet. No, no, not much not, difference in the picture much, quality? Not no. a great deal of difference yet, no. no. So if it's not quality, what do they like about digital TV? Hot videos. Sport. Local newspaper. And music. Video on demand. Home banking. But very broadly, I mean, do you think digital television is going to appeal to user family when you have to pay for it? <laughs> Um, there might be a little bit different when we have to pay for it. Um, but yeah, we get a lot of use out of it. Worth it? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Especially when they're going to broaden it anyway, you know, put more films on and everything. Well, whether you decide to give it a whirl or wait and see how digital develops, the government plans to scrap existing analogue transmissions within the next ten years. So, like it or not, in the end, we're all going to have to go digital.